Okay, so um, we're going to be doing notes on solving systems using elimination. Now we need to figure out when we do do this versus other things. So when we are doing this, I'm going to change the screen for one second. Again, when it's equal values, that's when both equations are y equal or maybe x equal and we set them equal and we solve. Solving by system by substitution. I know one of them is y equal or maybe x equal and I substitute what what it equals into the other equation. In each of these situations, I ended up with one equation with one variable. One equation with one variable instead of two equations with two. That's our goal. Okay. So when do I use elimination? Use elimination if neither equation is in y equal form, and I'll put in parentheses or x equal form, okay? So no, neither one of your equations is in y equal form or x equal form. That's when you're going to use this method. So um, for this, I'm going to also state a little information about our goal, okay? Our goal in each of these situations is to get one equation and one variable. In this particular situation, um, our goal is to eliminate either the X or the Y. Eliminate either the X or the Y. Okay, that is our goal. So when I am doing this, I'm gonna go through today four examples. I'm gonna have us do two examples on Monday that are special examples, okay? So for this one, first problem, example one, let's say we have two Y, minus x is equal to five. And let's say our second equation is negative three y plus x is equal to negative nine. So you'll notice that neither equation is in y equal or x equal form. You'll also notice, hopefully, that in one equation, I have a negative X, and in the other equation, I have a positive X. So what that means is, if I add these two equations together, I can actually eliminate my X's. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these two equations together. And when I do this, uh, 2y plus a negative 3y is a negative y. My x's are going to cancel out equal and 5 minus 9 or 5 plus a negative 9, whichever way you want to think about them because they're the same, is a negative 4. Now, sometimes when you guys end up with a situation where this is negative, um, we, we don't know what to do. You could multiply this side and this side, both of these by negative 1. Or a lot of us think about dividing by negative one because it's like there's really like a little negative one in front. And we're going to end up with y equal four. The way I think about it is if I have a negative y and I want a positive, 
make everything opposite on both sides. Then you'll get what you want. Because when I divide by a negative or I multiply by a negative, that's what happens. It makes it opposite. So now I have my y. I need to find my x. So we need to decide if we want to substitute that into equation one or equation two. It really, truly does not matter. Looking at this for me, if I see that I'm trying to find x and my x is negative, maybe I'll do the one where my x is positive, but it does not matter, okay? Uh, and, and I just want to make a little note here in this situation that what we were doing was we were eliminating our x. So again, we always want to be eliminating one of the variables, okay? So in this case, we were eliminating x. So now I'm going to substitute this into either equation. I'm just going to call this one equation one and this one equation two. So I'm going to put it in equation two. Okay, I'm going to put it in equation two. And so I'm going to rewrite it. Negative three y plus x equals negative nine. That way I see it. I'm not mixing up part of one equation with part of the other. I know which one I'm substituting into. Now, this is my y. So I'm going to put this four right here for my y. So I'm going to get negative 3 times 4 plus x equals a negative 9. So I get negative 12 plus x equals a negative 9. Then I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And I'm going to end up with x is equal to, and I get 3. Now, remember, when we are doing this, we always write our answer out in the form x comma y as a point. So just a little reminder, we always write our x first and then our y. So my x is 3, my y is 4, so my answer, my solution is 3 comma 4. But that's also a point of intersection. That's where the two lines, if I graph these two lines, that's where they would cross. So they might say, find the point of intersection. They might say, solve the solution, find the solution. They both mean the same thing. Okay. Now, this problem was nice. Why? Because our X is canceled out just by adding them. The next problem I'm going to do is not going to be as nice. Okay, it's going to be one step a little bit diff more difficult than the last one. So let's say example two. So for example two, we have three X plus four Y equal one. Okay. And our second equation is 2x plus 4y is equal to 2. So if I have 3x plus 4y equal 1 and 2x plus 4y equal 2, if I added these equations together, is it going to eliminate? Well, a 3x plus a 2x is a 5x. A 4y plus a 4y is an 8y. Do you see how nothing eliminated? Do not add the equations together if nothing eliminates. I want to either have my x's eliminate or my y's. So in this case, which would be easiest to do, my x's or my y's? So in this situation, it's easiest to try to eliminate our y's because they're both the same number. I just need them to be different signs. So I'm going to multiply one of these equations by a negative one. Myself, personally, I probably would do it to the bottom equation just because I think it's easier math. But if I really, truly wanted to, I could eliminate my x's. I just would have to do more work. If I want to eliminate my x's, 
and I have a 3x and a 2x, I have to make them each be a 6. One of them a positive 6 and one of them a negative 6. And I'd have to multiply both equations. So what I want us to do is if you can do it to one equation, do that. So I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by a negative 1. And I'm going to try to eliminate y. Okay, my y don't eliminate naturally. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I am going to get 3x plus 4y equal 1. I'm not doing anything to that equation. This equation, I am multiplying everything by a negative 1. So I'm going to get a negative 2x, a negative 4y, and a negative 2. And now, when I do that, you'll notice that I have a positive 4y and I have a negative 4y. So now when I add, they're going to cancel out. Okay? So now when I add, they're going to cancel out. So when I add these together, I'm going to get an x, 1x, but I'm just going to write x. These are going to cancel out, equal a negative 1, and that is my x. Okay, that is my x. So now that I have my x equal negative 1, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it into either equation, either equation 1 or equation 2. Okay, so which equation would you rather put it in? Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe I'll put it in the bottom one because it's smaller numbers. It doesn't matter. Okay, you can put it into either one. Um, so I am going to, let's say, put it into the second equation. And so I'm going to take 2x plus 4y equals 2. I'm going to put a negative 1 in for my x. So I get negative 2 plus negative 2 times negative 1 plus 4y equals 2. Negative 2 plus 4y equals 2. And I'm going to solve this two step problem. To solve this two step problem, I am going to be adding 2 to both sides. And I get 4y is equal to 4. I am going to be. Dividing both sides by 4, and I get y is equal to 1. So my final answer is going to be negative 1 comma 1. That is my answer. That is my point of intersection. Okay, so example 3. This one's going to be a step beyond the last two. So for this one, move it so I can see it. Okay, so for this one, what's going to happen is we are going to be trying, for example, three. Let's say I have a 2x plus y equal 10. And let's say the second equation is a 3x minus 2y is equal to 1. Again, in this situation, if I was to add just as I see them, I would get a 5x and a negative y. Nothing canceled out, nothing eliminated. So I need to decide, should I try to eliminate my x's or should I try to eliminate my y's? Well, in this case, if I was trying to get, eliminate my x's, I'd have to get like a 6 in front of both of them, one of them being a positive, one of them being a negative. In this case, I could really just multiply one of the, the equations, the top equation, by a 2. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by a 2. And when I do, I'm going to end up with 4x plus 2y equals 20. 
multiply everything by two. The reason I'm doing that is because in the second equation, I have 3x minus 2y equals 1. So my goal is to get the same number in front of either my x or y. So that I can eliminate it. So in this case, I'm going to be eliminating my y. So when I add this together, I'm going to end up getting a 7x. This is going to cancel out is equal to 21. I divide both sides by 7. And when I divide both sides by seven, I get X equals three. So now I'm gonna take this and put it either into equation one or equation two. Now I'm trying to get Y because I already have my X. So when I'm looking at my Y, this one's just plain Y and this one's a negative two Y. I think I want to put it into the top equation. I think it might just be a little easier math. So I'm going to put this into equation. I'm calling this equation one. The 2x plus y equals 10. And I'm putting this in place of my x. So I have 2 times 3 plus y equals 10. 6 plus y equals 10. And when I subtract six from both sides, I get y is equal to four. And so my point of intersection is three comma four. That is my answer. This point is where the graph crops. This point, if I plugged it into both equations, would make both equations true at the same time. On this example, we are going to have, so example four, um, 4x plus 3y equal 10. 4x plus 3y equal 10. And 9x minus 4y is equal to 1. So again, if I add these two together, I'm going to get a 13x. This would end up being a negative y, nothing canceled. Don't add them, okay? Don't add them and give me a third equation with two variables. Two was bad enough. We don't need a third one, right? If you end up not getting one equation with one variable, you did not do it properly. So can I multiply one equation or do I have to maybe multiply more than one equation? So we need to decide, do we want to try to eliminate our X's or do we want to try to eliminate our Y's? Honestly, I could do either one. If I was gonna eliminate my X's, I would need to get a 36 in front of both of these because I could times not four by nine to get a 36 and I could times this by four to get a 36 and I need one of them to be negative. Okay, or I could get rid of my Y's. And if I'm getting rid of my Y's with a three and a four, I can make them into a 12. What I notice is I probably would rather try to get a 12 than a 36. Also, one of these is already positive and one of these is already negative. So I don't have to worry about the sign. So you could do either one, but I'm going to multiply the top one by four. And I'm going to multiply the bottom one by three. And when I multiply the top one by four, I'm going to get 16x plus 12y equals 40. 
when I multiply the bottom one by 3, I am going to get a 27x. And when I take 3 times a negative 4y, I get a negative 12y. So I got the same number in front of my y's, one being positive and one being negative. And then I have to also multiply my 1, so I get 3 here. So when we are doing this, you need to try to either get the same number in front of my x's, which again, if I wanted to do the x, the smallest thing that 4 and 9 both would evenly go into would be a 36. So I can make them both be a 36. One of them positive, one of them negative. With a 3 and a 4, the smallest numbers that number that they go into is a 12. So I times this by 4, getting a 12, times this by 3. Since this was negative, it became a negative 12. Now they're going to cancel. So now I'm going to add these two equations together. And when I do here, I get a 43x, which looks pretty bad. I'm a little worried. Then I'm going to combine these, cancel out, equal. Oh, I got a 43 on the other side. So that ended up being a nice. My x is going to end up being 1. So now I'm going to take this x and I'm going to substitute it into either equation. I'm trying to find my y. So I notice this one's negative 4y and this is a positive 3y. I'm leaning towards the positive 3y to plug into. Okay, it does not matter. That's my preference. So I'm going to take this and put it into equation. I'm calling this equation one. And so I have 4x plus 3y equal 10. I'm plugging this in for my x. 4 times 1 plus 3y equal 10. So 4 plus 3y equal 10. And I'm going to minus 4 from both sides. And I get 3y is equal to 6. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I get 2. So my point of intersection is going to be 1, 2. Now on Monday, we're going to go through two that are a little bit more special and try that.